Hi there, it's Editing Brittany here. You can see I'm working on this video now. While I was editing this, I felt like it was getting hard to explain the story of this overall video, so I just wanted to quickly pop in and explain what you're about to watch. This is not gonna be a tutorial because frankly, I didn't know what I was doing through the majority of this video. The main point of this video is I think I cracked the code to fitting pants. If you've ever tried to sew a pair of pants, you know how frustrating it can be to fit pants on yourself and figure out how the pieces should look to conform to your body, but I think I cracked the code. So that's what this video will be. You're gonna see a lot of failures in this video, but you're also gonna see a lot of wins, especially towards the end when I figure out how to do what I'm trying to do and how to fit pants, and I come up with a really great product that I am so proud of. So if you want to see how I got to that, you're gonna wanna stay till the end. I always like to say, if you find any of the information in my videos valuable or entertaining or you learn anything from it, please feel free to like, comment, or subscribe wherever you can. It tells the YouTube algorithm that I'm doing a good job and I'm making good content and I wanna keep getting that data back to make sure that I am putting valuable information on the internet and helping people, which is my overall goal. So enough blabbing, let's rewind a couple of weeks ago when I started this project all together. Hi everyone, my name is Brittany. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I like to sew. I like to sew a lot. However, I've only sewn one pair of pants on my channel. And the reason for that is there's just always something wrong with them. Pants are a pain in the butt, pun intended, to sew. I love a good high-waisted straight leg pant. I feel like that's a classic cut, classic silhouette, can go with anything, it's timeless. I would love to perfect a straight-legged, high-waisted pair of pants for myself. I just made a mock-up of a pair of pants I'm working on. It is from a designer here on YouTube, a fellow creator. This is Kahi, I think that's how you say it. This is nothing against her. Her designs are amazing. She is so talented and I've bought so many of her patterns and they've just sat there because I'm scared of making pants. I bought her Matilda 80 style jeans pattern and I made my first mock-up and the, the first mock-up is not great. We're gonna see how many mock-ups I need to get through, all the alterations I need to make to make this fit the way I want. I need to stop blabbing and just show you. Let's show you the first mock-up of this pattern. Let me show you. So this is what we're working with. This is mock-up number one. I'd say we're at a good start. It's snug on the widest part of my body, which is my hips, right here. It's a little snug. And I have a bit of a pooch. Not like weight-wise, okay, my body's fine. But when we're talking about like body proportions and shapes, I don't have a perfectly flat stomach. It protrudes a bit and the fly does not want to wrap around that. The waist is humongo. Like even if I were able, I don't know how to explain this. It's like, it's too tight here across the front, but yet it's too big back here. I think I have what they call a sway back. To be quite frank, I don't know what to do about from here up. I don't know what to do yet. I need more space in this area, maybe just on the front, but then on the back, I need less. And I feel like the, the yoke goes a bit too high. Like it's, it's very high up here, the pants, and then they kind of dip forward. I don't know if that's the pattern or my body doing that. I really don't know. And um, the crotch curve, I think it's fine on the front. There's no weird like creases here or anything, but on the back, I think it's going up my butt a bit. So I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know if I need to make that crotch curve longer or deeper. This is literally gonna be a trial and error for me and I'm just gonna take you along with me. A few moments later. I'm actually gonna try something for the back because I feel a little more confident about what to do for the back. So I'm going to rip some of these stitches out. They're just basting stitches. And I'm just going to bring this forward a bit and pin this where it was. Something like that. I'm going to mark this new line right here. I'll have that mark on the back piece now. I'll, I'll have a line right here, and that will tell me basically how much I need to trim off from the back piece. I'm pretty confident that will be fine. For the front piece, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this entire thing apart. I'm going to patch on some fabric. I'm just gonna sew a piece, a chunk of fabric right around this region to extend this. Basically, so I can start doing what I'm doing here and like pinning it together and piecing it where I want, because right now I don't have enough playroom. There's not enough fabric to stretch, right? It's too small. Hopefully that will allow me to bring the center front closed and we'll go from there. I think the general approach overall will be to get the fit of 
here up right, and then I will worry about the crotch curve. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Well, first, the first thing I did was I took in the back top along the center back right here, um, and I showed you a clip of that. I basically just like took it in like a triangle. So I think that was like maybe an inch total up here, maybe. And then I patched fabric along the sides of the front. You can see that I'm not having those lines pulling here anymore. They say, I mean, I'm still learning this, but they say if there's lines on your garment, it's pointing to the problem. So I guess it was pointing to the hips or something. I don't really know. But if I turn to the side now, it almost looks like the front is like just hanging flat across my thighs now. There's a little more give here, which is good. I still have to account for a waistband. There's still a waistband. So these will be pretty high waisted. Okay, so it's not even on each side. I am very aware of that. So I'll have to make sure that these adjustments are equal on both sides when I have this flat on the table. The waist fits much better. It's still a little big. I can either take it in here again some more or in the sides. Well, let me try here again, a little bit more. Something a little more like that. It's not perfect, but it's not too tight on the waist. I can still slip some fingers in there. My waist fluctuate a lot, fluctuates a lot during the day and I just had a big meal. So this is probably the biggest it'll get. So if it fits now, I'll be good. I think I'm happy with this actually. I'm actually surprised how good that went. So basically what I need to do now is I need to mark, ow, mark these new seam lines. They're not gonna be even, it's okay. Measure on each side the change that I did, add those together, divide it by two, and then that way I can evenly make those adjustments on the pattern. And I'll show you all that when it's flat. Is this bad? Are you guys like yelling at the screen how obvious something is and I don't know? Okay, so I took the entire front part off. Uh, before I did that though, I used a pink marker and I marked where I had it pinned, the scene you just saw. And if you remember, I said it's not even on both sides because I was just kind of hastily pinning it. So then what I did was I, um, you can see there's some lines here, one, two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. These are an inch spaced apart. And what I did was on each side, I just measured the distance from the original seam line to that pink line, which was my new seam line basically. And I just, you can see my notes here. I started writing everything and I basically, um, on each side, I measured that distance between the pink line and the original line. And then I just averaged um, between the two to get a consistent measurement. And that is what this green line is. This is the average between those two pink lines. And I only did the green on one side because this is just gonna be a mirror image. So I'll take this apart and this will serve as my new pattern piece. Let me take this apart and I will show you what I'm gonna do next. I took it apart so I just have the one half of the front and then I cut off all the seam allowances. So this is the true pattern piece, the new one, um, without the seam allowances. There's a little bit of a weird dip here, so when I put this on paper, I'll straighten that out a bit. I'll chew everything up. I did the same with the back. I didn't like how small the yoke was on the back, so I actually just cut a new style line. Like you can see, the original one was right there, but I didn't like how small it was, so I just literally cut it along where I wanted the new seam to be. So I'll try that out on the next mock-up. I still have not addressed the crotch curve on the back. I'm gonna do that on paper. So my next step at this point is to take these three pieces, trace them on paper, and I don't have to worry about like seam allowances or anything because there's none accounted for at this point. So I literally just trace it on the outside of the fabric. So let me do that real quick and then we're gonna adjust the crotch curve on the back and then it's time for mock-up two. Next, I'm gonna work on the crotch curve. And I have a book that talks about just this. There's a page in here that talks about adjusting the crotches, like the crotch of pants patterns. So I'm looking at the part that says how to adjust a pattern if the crotch is too tight. This talks about if it's too tight in the front and the back, but I'm just having problems with the back. So I'm kind of winging it here. Hopefully you can see what's going on here. There's that crotch curve right there. And it says to cut along the inside seam allowance. So this line here, cut along that line from the crotch point to the knee level. Measure on the seam line and move the cut section out to add necessary length to the seam.
Hi you guys. It is probably two days, I think, since I last checked in with you. So the last time I checked in with you, I was working on mock-up number two. I showed you those clips and I tried it on and I just got really frustrated and I'll put some pictures on the screen. I guess I need to scoot over a bit so I have room right here. I made that mock-up, I tried it on, and I was just really frustrated because the first mock-up I showed you, it was pretty snug around the hip area, which I want. Um, I want a tighter fit in the hip area. And then I tried it on and it was like really loose in the hips all of a sudden. But the really frustrating part is the crotch. And this is the part I always get to when I try to do something like this, the crotch curve. It looks like my butt is eating those pants up. Like it looks like a wedgie, but it's not. It fits loose in the crotch curve. So I was really confused and I got upset. So I had to set it aside for a sec, do some research. I, I looked at a ton of blogs. I even went on Reddit. Reddit has a really good sewing community. And I asked on there for help. And then somebody commented and told me about a system called Top Down Center Out. It's a method for making pants patterns fit you that is different than the approach I've been showing you so far. So like make a mock-up, try to adjust the crotch curve, try again, something else, try again, something else, try again. I'll just link some videos in the description of this video that do a much better job explaining what it is than I could because I just learned about it. Long story short, you basically just, instead of doing mock-ups with two legs, you do it with one leg. So you have your waistband that you put on your body, nothing's attached to it. And then that's kind of like your anchor point and you sew one leg, so a front and a back of one leg, and then you slip that on, just one leg, and then you pin that to the waistband. You know, you can tilt it front or back because it's only one leg and it's free from the other. You can see, like you can look at the crotch curve, you can look at how it hangs, you can maneuver it. And so I thought it was genius. What else? I actually reached out to the pattern designer herself and asked for advice and she responded. I was like so surprised she responded because she's, not exactly a small creator, she's kind of big. So that was super amazing of her. Thank you if you're by any chance watching this. I think she said there was too much fabric in the back crotch curve, so I need to have more of a scoop. I don't know, I'm gonna take all the feedback I've gotten from Reddit, from the designer herself, and try this new approach and see what I can come up with. Okay, I actually have this, the mock-up I just showed you, round two, I have it here. I'm going to take it apart so it's just one leg and then make a faux waistband, and then go from there. So I'll be censoring this for obvious reasons, but I have learned a lot from doing this. Just being able to look at how my body is situated in a pair of pants just by looking at one leg has been very insightful about my anatomy. Long story short, I essentially have this pinned the way I want. I also realized I need a contoured waistband. The waistband for this pattern is just a straight rectangle, and I had to pin a little bit more at the top of the waistband just to keep it where I want it. So I've learned that. I think I realized I needed to raise the back part higher. I don't know why. I just like, I was finagling this for a long time. What I ended up doing was taking the sides in a bit more, raising the back of the leg. But as far as though it's hanging from my butt now, I. I like the way this is sitting. I think this looks flattering. I guess now that I have it pinned to this waistband, I can just take this waistband off, but leave it pinned to the waistband so I can transfer all these new seam lines and try again. <laughs> I'm gonna get a marker, cause like right here, these seam lines are not original anymore. So I'll need to draw basically my new seam line straight down so I have a reference point when I trace my new pattern pieces. So I just did my third mock-up, my third fitting, and that went like unbelievably, surprisingly well. I will be forever using that top, top down center out method for pants fitting in the future. Like highly recommend, highly, highly. The only slight correction I am going to make is I'm just gonna shorten the front crotch length just literally this much, just a tiny bit. It was a little baggy there 
um, and that was literally the only problem. To me, everything else looked great, at least for the way I want my pants to fit. I think I'm sewed out for the day though, so I'm gonna clean up and then I will see you guys tomorrow. Hi you guys, it's been a few days later. I spent some time last night cutting out my fabric for my final, final pair of pants. I have been researching like backwards and forwards everywhere on the internet how to do crotch length alterations. And I've come across the problem that there seems to be several ways to do it and I don't know which way is correct. So I have a book that I bought the other day and that book said to basically slash right at hip level and then just basically you can use that as a hinge and reduce the crotch length that way. I tried that and something just looked off and it just really skewed how the shape looked. So I thought I really don't want to, I'm going to do a mock up one more time with my muslin fabric and see how it looks and I'm really glad I did because it looked awful. So I went back, I untaped everything, and I tried a different way, which came from this book I have, which I kind of treat as my Bible nowadays. And I was very doubtful because I was trying to only alter the front crotch length, not the back, but that one advised you to alter both at the same time, all together. So I thought, okay, I'll just try it. And that time came out much better. With some tiny little tweaks after that, I think I have, hopefully, a very well tailored pattern to me. So I am all good to go now. I've got all my pieces cut out. The first step to everything will be to do some interfacing. Um, I only have a few pieces to do on that. Then the next step will be to serge all of my raw edges on everything. And then it's time to get some red thread, fill my bobbin, and get to work. Hi everyone, it's voiceover Brittany here. Just wanted to quickly walk you through what's gonna happen here. First, I attached the pocket facing to the pocket and then attached the pocket to the pant front. And with a little bit of coaxing with some understitching, some pressing and some clipping of the curve of the pocket, the pocket should willingly cooperate and flip to the proper side of the pants, which is the inside of the pants. And after one good final press, it'll look like this. After that, I flipped the pocket in half and did the final seam along the left side of the pocket there. After that, I did some top stitching on the pocket from the front of the pant, and it was time to move on to the fly. I'll spare you the details. I didn't film a whole lot of this because I got really frustrated, but I actually ended up doing a button fly, an exposed button fly to be more precise instead of the regular zipper fly that this pattern called for. I think a good button fly is really flattering. I've always loved the way they look, so I went for that instead of the zipper. And look at all that top stitching. Ugh, I love this shot, it's so pretty. Next, I attached the yoke to the back of the pants. I'll talk about this in my wrap up later. I, I think I made my yoke too big now, but that's something I can tweak for later. I did a cute little flower detail on the pockets that you just saw, and here's the final product. I am so, so happy with how the front fits. It fits exactly how I want. I think I could tweak the back just the tiniest bit more, but still overall, I am very much in love with these pants. I think they're so fun, and I learned so much about how to fit pants throughout this process. So with that being said, let me talk to you about my final thoughts and comments on this entire project. So I took the straight waistband and altered it to be a contoured waistband. That was one change I made. The yoke, I made it deeper and more tapered in the center back. The 
back of the pant I tapered at the waist the front of the pant I lowered at the center front and I extended on the side seam for the crotch curve I very much shortened the front and the back just the tiniest bit and as I said I think for next time the yoke I will make less deep I know I said at the beginning I wanted it more deep but then in looking at the final product I think it was way too deep so I'll shorten that back to the original size probably in retrospect I figured out what I could do to fit the back just a little bit better. I ended up taking a half inch off the entire front inseam of the pant and I forgot to do it on the back. I'm just now realizing that. So I think if I do that, the back will fit exactly the way I want as well. I hope you learned a lot in this video. I learned so much throughout this whole entire process. All in all, I invested well over 20 to 25 hours, something like that on this project. I did a total of I think six mock-ups, some you saw, some you didn't. I just left it off screen for time's sake. And I will forever be using the top down center out method. I love how you can see from the inside, from the crotch, you can see how the crotch curve is laying against your body. It made fitting so much easier. So I highly, highly recommend this system if you've been scared of fitting pants too. And again, like I said, I hope you learned something from this video. I hope it helped you in any way. If it did, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing where you can. And I will see you guys with my next project.